Hello and welcome back, everybody. This is Grillenheimer. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for thanks for following. Uh, this is going to be more in the long the lines of a kind of a podcast. Think of this as a Christmas podcast. I don't have the time to try to do one of these every day, but you know, really, we're going to be looking in the Bible. So this is not anything card related or anything else. This is different. This is on the spiritual nature. We're getting back into the Bible again. Um, just to have a lot on my plate. So I am inside my car outside. So there might be some other noises that you may hear. And I apologize for that. So we are in the book of Luke in chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 26. And, and there's a theme here. And I haven't heard many people talk about this. I might be going about this all wrong. Maybe we can all learn something in the process. If somebody wants to add something into the comments and say, hey, here's some real context. Let me know. Add to it. All we can do is learn and go forward. Okay? So this is about the announcement of the birth of the Son of Man. The announcement of the birth of Christ. So let's get into it. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the descendants of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. So they're not married yet. They're kind of engaged. And yeah, to us, they would be considered teenagers. But back then, these were adults, but they weren't living with each other yet. And coming in, he said to her, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation this might be. Make a note right there. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the holy offspring shall be called the Son of God. And behold, even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age. And she who was called barren is now in her sixth month. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, be it done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now, at this time, Mary arose and went with haste to the hill country to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it came about that when Elizabeth's, Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed among women are you, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is he who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what has been spoken to her by the Lord. So we're going to stop there at verse 45. We went from 26 to 45. And what I'm really wanting to unpack here, let's go back. Okay, I've been doing a little research. And here in America, and in a little polite English, in certain circles, and you see somebody, and you say something, it's normally a greeting, you know, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guten morgen, guten abend, you know, 
Uh, but a, a lot of the, the Jew, Jewish would say, use words like shalom, where shalom is like peace, hello, and goodbye. Um, I remember learning a little Southern German, I believe, or I think it was Southern German, Süddeutsch, or maybe it was just a high, strict, plain kind of German where Grüß dich, G R O E or U E S S D I C H, and it just is sort of a general term that also means the same thing: hello and goodbye. A very informal. Um, one word that you can say mean it kind of everything when you see someone and when you leave someone. And that's kind of what shalom is for the Jews. Uh, for us, we have two different words completely. Hey, how you doing? Hey, John. Hey, Charlie. Goodbye, Charlie. Goodbye, Jim. Goodbye, Joe. Hey, Catherine, whoever. Okay. You normally don't say their name. You just normally say, hey, or good morning, or, or go, good night. I'll, uh, we'll see you later. See you, to, see you tomorrow, etc. Very general greetings. Well, the Jews have a lot of those too, but they have a lot more meaning. And there's certain greetings and salutations that they say with certain meanings. Okay, and you can look some of these up, and I'll try to add a few of these links that I have found online. Uh, so that you can look at, and there's probably some more. Um, and I was really trying to find a, a few to help us out unpack this a little bit. And I kind of came up blank. Not really, but let's look at this. Hell, favored one, the Lord is with you. Let me tell you, that greeting is nowhere in the greetings that I found. So when... Mary was completely troubled at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation this might be, because it's not a normal greeting that someone, one one Jewish person would say to another Jewish. This isn't shalom. This isn't, you know, uh, oh goodness, or even uh, shalom lekaha. I'm I'm probably butchering some of this stuff. Mazel tov. You know, good luck, congrats, congrats, congratulations, I got a good sign, or, you know, mazel tov, good good sign. You know, they have certain words that can mean multiple things, too, just like we do. Uh, But they'll use it in in greetings and salutations, hellos and goodbyes. And so, when the angel said this greeting, it threw her off. On top of just seeing the angel itself. I mean, every time an angel appears, one of the first things it normally says is, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Before this angel said that, though, he gave her a a polite greeting, except it was very specific for her. Because he knew God favored Mary, what Mary's future was going to be, in explaining to her, you will be overshadowed. You are going to have a son before you are married. This is his name. And what does she do? What does Aunt Mary do? She gets up and runs to her cousin's house. I think it's her cousin, Elizabeth. You know, a, a, a close relative, but not so close. According to the distance, it looks like it could be 80 to 100 miles from where Nazareth was to where Elizabeth could have been living in the hill country, which on foot could be four to six days. Maybe if she traveled with a caravan and found a group to to safely travel with, maybe three or four days. That's a while because most of everything was on foot. And then, here we come to the second greeting. Except, again, we don't know her greeting. And it came about when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting. John the Baptist, unborn, leaps with joy inside Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit. And then she cries out with a a greeting back. Now, if you look at some of 
no, I'm just an American. You live in the South. I don't know much about these traditions, okay? So, once I was starting looking up some of these greetings and salutations of, of the Jews that have followed and remained in their traditions for thousands of years, I find that amazing and fascinating because any, a lot of, any decent traditions that we have laid in our own country are being dismantled and trying to take it away from us. Like Merry Christmas, something as simple as Merry Christmas, they are trying to do away with. Okay, so there are some pre-birth greetings when someone has a greeting and they see someone, there can be a response greeting in return. Very formal. It can, it can be a very formal way to start a conversation. And they get so used to saying these, they don't even probably think much about it. You know, which I find, again, just intriguing. I enjoy this stuff. Um, now, for a pre-birth greeting, could be Bashaha Tova, or if I probably butchered that, in a good hour, which means that's probably the safest greeting to tell someone that is pregnant because they they're pregnant, but they haven't had the baby yet. The baby, uh, you know, something could happen. Something could happen to the baby. It, the pregnancy may not go full term. You know, it. And uh, especially in, in way back, you know, thousands of years ago, heck, just a, maybe 150 years ago or so or less, we had, you know, tuberculosis, the disease would knock down baby populations. I mean, you can just go to an Amer any American cemetery and walk through on a nice fall day and uh, look at, look at the, the tombstones and you might see... You know, where kids only lasted a day, three days, four days, maybe a year. And yeah, they were trying to make big families to try to maybe help with the farm, farm work, for the most part, back then, over 100 years ago. But still, many babies would not make it. And this is thousands of years ago, two, almost just over 2,000 years ago here. So who knows what other afflictions could be happening to unborn babies or babies that were born. So, you know, saying something like, you know, in a good hour is safe to, to tell a greeting to someone that's pregnant, to a woman that's pregnant. Um, so, and for all we know, I mean, I can. We can only guess. We can only surmise here at what Mary's greeting to Elizabeth was. It could have been that mixed with Baruch Haba, "Blessed be the one who comes," which would be more assurance. I know you're pregnant. I know you're pregnant, and it's going to go to term, and in his son's name is going to be John the Baptist. I know you're not going to have a problem with this pregnancy giving Elizabeth assurance, and then she may have said in an in, 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 in addition to that greeting, implying her pregnancy. Because Elizabeth responds with another greeting, but her greeting is even more profound. Blessed among women, all women, are you and blessed is the fruit of your womb how has it happened to me that the mother of my lord my savior the christ to come should come to me she is humbled she is completely floored that her relative who's a lot younger than herself who was originally Baron couldn't have kids, is now having John the Baptist in a couple of months. And all of a sudden, Mary comes through her door with this crazy greeting that somehow automatically implies she knows Elizabeth is pregnant, six months pregnant, and that Mary's pregnant too. 
and is carrying the Christ, carrying the Savior, carrying the Messiah, the years of silence are over. This is it. And so Elizabeth is floored, and her greeting back to Mary is just as profound, if not even more so, more so than the angel, angel's greeting to Mary in verse 28. I mean, when you walk up to somebody... What what are what are we saying? What are we saying? Are we even talking to each other anymore in the streets? When I'm driving around, I just simply will wave at people. Just to, as acknowledgement, as a sign of peace. It's like, hey, because I'm in a very mixed neighborhood. And we really look out for each other. Yes, I'm in Alabama. Yes, where it's a mostly red state, but that really shouldn't matter. We should be watching out for each other, and we do. I could tell you stories how we watch either, each other's backs, how we help each other, the love that we show in service to one another. And that's how we should also be greeting each other, not by throwing shakes on each other in, ha- in hate and animosity, or doing something even more vile by trying to hit someone in the head with a brick or an unopened can of vegetable, uh, an unopened can of whatever. I mean, dang, that's not good. So, greetings and salutations were very important to these people. She knows, skip to Matthew 4, and Jesus was teaching and preaching. He was walking by the Sea of Galilee, and did, according to Matthew, did he use a greeting? We don't know. It's more like a command. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He said, you know, he saw Simon, who will be called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. Did he use an official greeting? Did Matthew just maybe not want to write all these greetings back and forth? It's just an outright, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. It's a direct command. It's starting with a verb, with an action, do this. And they do. Maybe it was so profound, maybe he, if he truly didn't use, you know, Mazel tov, Shalom, or anything like that. And it was just directly, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. That it was so shocking that they're like, whoa, let's do what he, let's do what he says to do. Stop fishing for fish and fish for men. With the word and follow this man because he is the Messiah. Something to think about. I don't know, because, you know, Jesus through his life was going against a lot of traditions, a lot of parts of the religion that the Pharisees did not like. Could that have been one of them? Could this be part of the puzzle as well? Maybe breaking some traditions of, of greetings? I don't know. I'm not really trying to go there, but I guess I did. But it's a good question, a good open ended question to end this with. So. Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. What kind of a greeting is that? It's a greeting that is not just acknowledging her presence, letting her know that she is favored by God, and that God is with her. It's doing three things right right here in one statement in his greeting in one nice beginning, middle, and end. That's powerful. No wonder she was troubled and confused at this statement. What kind of salutation is that? No one goes up to anybody saying, I acknowledge you, you're favored by by the Lord, and God is with you. Wow. Wow. And so who knows what Mary told Elizabeth 
it had to have been almost as profound, probably more profound than Elizabeth's reaction response greeting. Blessed among women are you, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what had been spoken to her by the Lord. She was so moved by the Holy Spirit coming upon her. And that isn't just the connect, obvious connection that John the Baptist and Jesus are related like, and cousins distantly, or maybe not so distantly. But what we say to each other means things. Words means things. Watch your words carefully as we go about this shopping season, excuse yourselves, say good day, say Merry Christmas, say hello. You, I mean, we may not be Jewish, may we may not carry their traditions, but we have some of our own that are just simply good manners that are being lost. And those that be that want to hold the power of our language in their hands have tried for over 50 years to get rid of Merry Christmas. But yet we're persistent and keep using it and keep hanging on to that simple greeting during times of Christmas, during the season of Christmas, because it's not a day. It may be this time of year that we celebrate his birth and we don't really know when he was born. You can check some videos and some information on where, when he might have been born. It used to be December 6th, now it's December 25th. But the day, specific day, is not important. What's important is knowing he shed his life for us. He sacrificed his life for us. He shed his blood to wipe away our sins when we simply believe in him. Again, profound. Again, profound. I didn't mean to quite go this long, guys. But this is just seems unique. It seems like there's a little more to unpack here. Because how the Jewish community communicates with each other is just so beautiful. And I don't know anyone else that has greetings and salutations quite like this. Ours are very simple, but we should still be polite to one another. Just as Jesus instructed us to treat each other as, as, as if we want to be treated. Follow the, follow the Ten Commandments, he said, but wait, there's more. Do this. And what we're seeing is that going by the wayside. Treat your friends and relatives well. Treat your enemies even better. Love them. That's the whole point. With that, I want to say thanks for listening. I didn't. I was hoping this would be a ten-minute video or podcast, not twenty-four. But again, this is really interesting. I'll, I'll put. I'll provide some links down below. I want to say thank you for listening. Blessed be the word of the Lord, as read today, from Luke chapter one, verses twenty-six through um, forty-five. And I have one important greeting and salutation to end this completely with a very simple how we are all favored by God. He's looking for us. He's looking for you. He wants you. 
in his life. He wants a relationship with you. But again, as always, Merry Christmas to all. Merry Christmas to all my listeners. Just a big thanks to every one of y'all. I might be able to get do a few of these more before the 25th. We'll see. I might go th- do a, 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 f- a few here once once every week till the end of December. Again, to me, it's not a day. It's a season. Don't get have anxiety for presents or buying presents or getting presents or the decorations. That's fun, but that's not the point. The point is Jesus. The point is our Christ, our, mes- our Messiah, our Savior, who came and saved us. So when the angel came and said, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. He's with every one of us when you accept Jesus Christ in your heart. Merry Christmas.